what is going on guys name is here bringing you guys a brand new video and i want to say thank you for the support on the last video it was a great one uh the viewer retention rate was fantastic we've grown in subscribers and we've been having a lot of fun here in the breakdown shout out to our editor cj barker with the brand new overlay i think it looks incredible and if you guys do enjoy this video make sure you leave a like comment what you think subscribe and turn those notifications on man today we are going to be breaking down the FaZe versus Gorillas matchup. Now, this was an incredible matchup. FaZe had not lost throughout the season so far in actual league play matches. And they actually finally lost to the Los Angeles Gorillas of all teams. So we're going to get into that in a moment. But before that, I want to give a quick shout out to XP Sports. They fuel me throughout all my days, every single morning, man. If I don't have coffee, I'm having some of the XP gummies. If I'm not having the gummies, I'm having some of the XP boost. And you guys can check out their website at xpsports.com in the description below. They also support the podcast, man. So if you use code NAMELESS or code CODCAST at checkout, it'll give you 30% off. And man, just to you know, give you guys sort of my honest opinion on these, the gummies, they're absolutely fantastic, man. It's just like having a nice you know, piece of candy to start your day, but it gives you good energy, good focus throughout the day. They're clean, they're great. And then the boost is fantastic as well. It's a powder. You just drop it in some water, you shake it up and it tastes absolutely unreal. Atlanta phase versus Los Angeles Gorillas. So right here, these are the stats from the series. Uh, you can see, uh, wasn't really a great series on the side of phase. Obviously they won uh, two respawns. They won the first hard point and the control. They lost the second hard point, both S and Ds. And for a team that has basically been dominant at search and destroy like this was a bit bizarre to see you can see silly he had an incredible series uh, as well as vivid he played fantastic in the search and destroys i mean everybody was pretty much consistent on the side of gorillas the damage really close uh in comparison there between these three um but i just thought it was insane to see you know a team like phase lose to the gorillas so also big shout out to gg breaking point their website's fantastic and a lot of my stats from here uh, they do good work over there man they got a good team and a nice good user interface that takes a while to load the teams but hey we got it up now so look right here man look at this list dude how many matches they've won if you include the major it's just so many and only one loss man and they only even had what one two three game fives right and they've won both of them uh and then lost this final one so it's been a wild ride for these guys so you can see in hardpoint they're 15 and 5 search and destroy 14 and 4 and then in control they are 11 and 3. So these guys like never lose maps like, that's how dominant they truly are all right guys now that we got all that out of the way let's check out the breakdown Absolutely express s and and frankly it's down a little express. bit you guys can see how the series went 251 76 moscow 6-2 miami s and &E, incredible performance by LAG and then checkmate control they lost 3-2 so that was also close and then they got smoked in the hard point phase did and it was just great uh, on the side of Vivid he had a good map just talk a little bit about the strategy going into this series I really liked how they played basically all AR maps outside of uh, Apocalypse um, but I like that they played both new maps Apocalypse and Express just giving a different look all right guys so as you can see here, the setup on LAG is basically a little bit slow. So they send assault to this hallway a lot. Now, this is my first time rewatching it from when it was live, but I remember most. They send assault to this hallway a lot just to like show face. And then they're gonna play really slow on a lot of their, their pushes, just waiting for phase to make a mistake. You can see Apathy's literally on his bridge, waiting for a player on phase to get overzealous and push up. And look what he does, he catches one. So there's mistake number one by phase. You're going up against LAG who had just lost a search and destroy in, in map number two. And where these pushes are working most of the time versus a lot of teams, at some point, somebody is going to figure you out. Um, I don't hate Atlanta phase trying to make these plays because it has been working obviously more often than not, but you'll see that they don't really stop throughout this map. And you and you can see sort of the, the script gets flipped on them and Gorillas makes them play their game, which is what I love about this. So anyways, uh, if this was any other team, that would be a grave mistake. But since it's phase, I'm going to give them a slight pass because it's been working and individually they're just unreal and nobody's cracked that code yet. But you can see the slow setup. They're waiting for the pick. There we go. So phase needs to learn and adapt from there. But uh, just to give some shout out to gorillas, great bot research, great plays, big kill out of apathy, giving them the advantage. So typically when, uh, when, um, excuse me, typically when a BZ pushes up and gets a first blood, uh, the team will swarm them from all sides and converge and trap you. But since they killed a BZ, they're thinking that the players are going to wrap and push out where a BZ just died from or wrap to where a BZ just died from. So 
So I like the play of them giving that up and going towards A. That's basically what's going through the mind right now. And you can see this is flawless teamwork here. They have two people watching the flank and two people going towards the bomb site slow, methodically checking all their corners. And it works out for them basically on point. Like Assault and someone else uh, watches the flank here. Well, Assault and Apathy. Was it Apathy? No, it was Silly. Assault and Silly watch the flank here. They're waiting for another player to group up or go try to get Abizi's trade and it's Selium. He pushes there, dies. It's working out according to plan at the moment. And FaZe is falling straight into the bait. Now they have a 4v2. Shots are down from Simp, so they know where he's located at. And now you just have to get the last information on where RCDs is and make a play towards the bomb. So you can see here, they're playing next level chess. Gorillas do not want to give FaZe any opportunity to win any of these rounds. So they've showed FaZe at A, and now they're hitting the dip all the way back towards B. And this is just high level plays, right? Like, don't give them any opportunity to clutch whatsoever. This is them playing extremely safe. Um, usually a team would just commit to that bomb site. They have numbers, but they know that it's FaZe and what they're capable of. So they go to where they ha would have a bigger advantage and they end up getting this bomb down here. So I actually really like this play. I mean, this is a high percentage play. You've had enough time. You have, you know, numbers. You can make this play. And you're just giving them a different look. You're keeping them guessing. And I'll explain why that's important after this round. You kill Simp. And RCDs dies. Okay, guys. So there's a basically like in search and destroy, right? It's not just about winning rounds. I mean, I guess essentially it's all about winning rounds, but in order to dominate a search, you have to keep them guessing in the beginning. Show looks everywhere on the map so they know that there's really no risk that can be taken that might not be answered, right? So with them wrapping back and forth to bombs, it shows face that they're not afraid to show face somewhere and wrap quickly. So it's gonna make you naturally second guess yourself. Like if you shoot a guy at A, is that really the whole team there? Are they really going to plan it yet? So you're more hesitant to relay that information or you'll relay it in a way of i've seen one today but i don't know if they're planning i've seen one today i only seen one right so that allows you more liberty on the map if you're gorillas to know that you might not be running into a stack from phase so i like that they set that up in round number one with the volley back and forth because it's going to give them the ability to have more room on the map to make plays especially it, it just gives you more ability to utilize your numbers okay guys i'm ranting a little bit let's keep on going into it video's getting long okay so here we go here we go two down low two up the mid phase are getting a little bit uh annoyed here you can see so they decided to hit him with like a little bit of an aggro push and this is a nice push out of phase because it's like you send two down low two through mid so if a guy goes mid here you can trade it and then you're easily able to basically get a uh top control you no know, shout out to obi-wan kenobi you can just shoot them all down i have the high ground so down low here is is lag they have three guys here one guy in ticket for phase and two guys down low but here here is where the error is in this setup so since you have nobody trained side to be able to react when uh things are going down over here and you have to have rcds look towards the train rcds naturally is not going to see vivid come through there and go front ticket so as that happens vivid finds the gap he gets the kill onto simp in the middle and it gives them the numbers because as that happens that gives the liberty that gives one of the players in lg liberty to go up top and also make a play they're able to swarm outnumber them and then rcs is left here basically useless and he ends up dying so here just to break that down for you guys once again because i know you guys might have missed it because it's a bit confusing Ticket. So these are the risks that FaZe take that wins them games, but it's not paying off because they're playing a really prepared LAG. Well, so look, right here. So this is what it is. So since this guy leaves and goes down here yeah, and they have cool. nobody A side, they're completely given up. RCDs has to look at the train to avoid that sort of play there. And since RCDs is looking at train, this guy finds the gap, gets through, vivid, and gets the kill, and the round is basically over. A player's able to come up here, and it's chalk. So, like, they're finding the gaps. They're doing a good job, because FaZe does take a lot of risks, right? Like, they, they're not unbeatable, but a lot of people thought they're not unbeatable, and vivid finds that gap. So, like, FaZe have probably learned that some risk we just simply can't take sometimes, especially if we're down in rounds, because this is what happens. It spirals out of control. You've lost two rounds in a row. Now, if you're FaZe, you've taken a risk like that, which could pay off, right? Like, that could have paid off. But it doesn't. They find your gap, and now you're down 3-0. So that's why when you're down, you have to play safe, get back in the game, and then you can take some of those risks.
honestly, these first. Whether or not he's thinking about streaks. I'm One round number four. Start. Three round lead. Five kills to his name, but the team effort across the board. Gorilla so far have had their. So three push down low for FaZe. Number and on the attack. Two push that down low for LAG. Two, two at A. Middle is open. LAG giving up mid, but they're obviously aware of that. So it's just showing face, and then they're going to back up, give up that site. I love the giving up sites that LAG is showing, not giving them numbers. So let's see how LAG play this. So what LAG are thinking right now is, okay, we saw them all go B. One guy could potentially be hitting our bridge and on our side. We have A control and mid control down, so we know, we know nobody is there. So we're sending one player, which is Apathy, all the way around. You're basically setting up a full map trap on them down low. Find some so Apathy knows that there's going to be one player watching the flank. So basically, they're all holding while they're waiting for Apathy to make a play on this guy on the flank to see if they could potentially open something up. Oh, can't quite find the ankles of so they're all just waiting, waiting, waiting. Apathy's trying to make the play here. They're grouping up. They're getting ready. Apathy's probably communicating. I'm looking for him. Finds him. Apathy finds the guy here and gets the kill. So, RCD's made a, a great mistake there. If he would have just backed up here and held that, it would have worked out a lot better. Or if he would have played even down low in the corner with his team. Open lane. Like, well, not essentially with his, just in this corner somewhere down here and and help and having number seven, which is help him out and get the information. They could have double teamed the, the guy that was on the flank. But instead, Apathy finds him, he gets the kill, right and side. he gets out and of dodge. Gone. So he redirects focus on phase to that area they were waiting on app to make the play he makes go, it go right and then now. they converge down low and as they're converging down low the guy that was in middle just making sure nobody pushed through and did anything weird into ticket he has a two he has a tag team with apathy they kill the guy in ticket and then the guy that redirected his attention for apathy is completely left out of this play and he just finally gets here after sprinting gets a two-piece but it's just not enough as silly runs in and shoots him in the back beautifully played out of lag i mean the timing on that was excellent the execution out of apathy everybody was just so on point in that round that was just like a well-oiled machine guys like when you watch these games guys keep in mind like what the communication might be like and how epic of a play that must have been if that was for apathy next attack this time they go towards b and, and frankly they pressured him out as soon as gorillas had the information that b is going but they backed out of the site they gave it up for free oh, we wish they would have kind of kind of like caught site. that that was we'll pretty sick play i know there's a lot that goes on in the moment though can't, can't catch everything all right so and their teamwork is so incredible let's see what lag doing here so two going towards a so you can see here they're worried about like the gaps that they were leaving open so phase sort of tries to cover all their bases here they have one guy mid one guy down low two guys a day problem is unnecessary risk so what we saw in round one where a bz pushed straight up their their elbow on their stairs he pushed straight up into the train here because they're they're thinking that they're going to run down the steps again right like oh they might do it again you're down 4-0 though you can't be making those types of mistakes a bz walks right into the train gets shot it was the easiest kill i've ever seen excuse me Big mistakes there, man. You're down four. You got to play a little bit safer, especially when you're split. You're split. He's completely alone. Tip gets there for the trade, but then Apathy's there with his teammate. Gets the kill there in a 3v2. Now look at the plays that they make. Redirect the attention. Back to B. Like clockwork. Keeping them guessing. They get down low here. You clear out down low. Nothing's there. Oh, they must have both wrapped. Now we have bomb control. This is beautiful. This is beautiful, this is beautiful like, work here. Lost right now. Like they just hit down here and hit that gap in the last offense. They knew that phase was going to try to look for it. So BZ goes into the train and looks for it. And what do you know? They kill. And the spot is super overpowered. So like, gets the bomb down. The heady gets the kill. That's basically the round. Varsities again in a one versus three. The third time it feels like we've seen him in a spot like this in the third. We'll take you here and oh. right now. All right, guys. So the final round. And at this point, the game's chalk. Like you've been keeping them playing the guessing game. You've hit every gap. You played a flawless search. But what are we gonna do here? We're gonna hit him in the gut. We're sending three down low, one towards A. If you're gorillas, phase. They're like, we just gotta hit B. What do you know? One player gets taken out. Oh, there. That's. Uh, Celium assault wins the gunfight, and you don't have numbers. Vivid wins the gunny. Silly challenges with the three, and this is just a blunt force round, right? Like this is just like let's mano y mano, let's put them out and let's win the game. And that's exactly what Gorillas did. And that was a game of chess from the beginning around. From the first round, LAG was setting up the pace that they wanted to play at. They made Phase play their game, and that's how you beat Phase.
that's how you do it now people might look at like oh that was a fluke this game is a coin flip with this and that and this and that no it's not a coin flip the gorillas knew exactly what they wanted to do they executed it perfectly and they were well prepared for that match so give them their credit i hate when i see that on reddit i hate when i see that on twitter that every game is a coin flip or whatever because it's not gorillas knew what they were doing they fair and square beat phase phase made mistakes they tried to do the same tricks that they do on every other team and gorillas weren't having it so with all that being said phase is still probably the best team in the game uh their respawn is just way too strong the search and destroy is super good as well just they met their match here when it comes to gorillas i think they were trying to widen their map pool a little bit and they had to learn and learn the hard way the risk did not work out in this one they will be back stronger when it comes major time which is coming up this week uh but anyways if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe i appreciate every single last one of you guys on this series and i hope it continues to grow if it does i will continue to make more uh but until next time guys peace and real i'll catch you guys in the next video